Okay. Just waiting for things to get all up to speed here. Okay. All right, I think we're good. I guess we'll find out if I forgot to do something. It is cold in here. I know it's like 59 out or something. I'm freezing. So, I don't know if it's just cold in here. Or what? I am frozen. Yeah, that or I just haven't gotten my system up to speed yet since waking up. Alright, so this is where we left off yesterday. We got our one crooked ass tree in here <laughs> and uh, we got some snow on it we got this bad boy in he still needs his snow though so that's where we left off in the chaos of yesterday and I do apologize for the chaos of yesterday really I do it yesterday just fucked up our whole day You cannot imagine, but we're here today. We're going to do some things. We're going to do some stuffs. We're going to get some snows on this tree here. Now this one, yeah, I was going to say that looks like two, nah, let go. This looks like two different strandy guys here. I'm just kind of rolling this a little bit just to kind of get an idea of how thick this boy is going to be. And we start tapping him into place. Oh, there's the husband. One second. And of course he messaged me, messages me just as I go live. I was like, what did I do with it? It helps if we have our our needle ready to go. <coughs> Excuse me. My sinuses are bound and determined to make me ill. waiting for him to get back to me because um, I'd asked him a question because something seemed strange in the kitchen and I was like why is this like this and he had already left and I didn't get the chance to ask him So, anyhow, we have some snow to put on this tree, and we're kind of in a put as much snow as you want on your tree situation, so let's go ahead, eh, let's start at the bottom. That should be fine. Oh, right. We need our scissors. Scissors are helpful of some description. And, like, these guys aren't terrible. 
I just wish that they would um, cut consistently, really, is what I'm looking for. These cats. So the chair I had gotten, what, a year ago now? A little over a year? <laughs> to replace the other one I could no longer sit in because I was in so much pain. Um, it's like that fake pleather stuff. And these cats go crazy and have a field day using it as a scratching post. And I'm like, cat, do you know how much that chair cost? I mean, it was probably cheap for most people, but that was expensive for us. And that was a very painful purchase in more ways than one. I've never spent $120 on a chair before and that was on sale and I was like, oh, I, was like, I don't know about this. Is this going to be worth this much money? Because they didn't have a model to sit in and they only had two of them left. It was kind of, and we went checking some other places and nobody really had anything in our area. The, the one office store supply that's still in operation that's near us, super expensive, like more expensive than that. And I know some people are like, oh no, you don't skimp on the chairs, but when you don't have it, you have to be really fucking picky. And I'm not a hundred percent happy with this chair, but it's all right. It's better than what I was using. At least I can sit in this one. Because no amount of chair padding was helping on the other piece, or on the other chair seat. <clears throat> but the cats have just been having a field day. using it as a scratching post. No matter how much I chase them off, the second I lay down in bed, two of them are over here. Stop it. Alright, so we're just working on getting some snowy branches worked in here. And that probably won't take too, too long. I'm trying not to fully line them up with the same branches below them, but it doesn't seem to be working that way. I like lay it in, I'm like, here looks good, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm lined up with the other one, that's probably, 
not the greatest idea, but oh well at this point. And that one was just really thin and he just kind of melted into there. So I did remember to clean off the pad a little bit. I got some of that extra blue that decided to attach to the pad. Worked up out of there. I was gonna lighten incense, but like I think I can get away using the smoking bottle burner when I'm doing this stuff, but I was a little hesitant to, and I could use one of my wax melts right now, <coughs> but I need to clean the burner. Sorry for the coughing. My sinuses, like I said, allergies are bad. We're both allergic to something in this state. Don't know what the fuck it is. It could be the hay fields. We don't know. It's super windy today. It got a little bit warm for a couple of days and then stuff started trying to bloom again. And, uh. It wasn't the air filter because we changed that on the um, heater. It doesn't help that we're in this like weird temperature thingy at the moment because um <coughs> excuse me because it's chilly and it feels like late or early spring during the day but then as soon as the sun sets it's freezing the heat's kicking on wait what is, what is going on what is even happening i do not know all right so this is just um this is just just white is white. Um, this is from the Big Twist stuff. It's either going to be a Big Twist or a paint box. Um, I will let you know which brand I'm using. I think I asked for a white and paint box. I don't know if I got it because I haven't finished fluffing those yarns yet and I don't remember what colors were in the box. One of the colors too accidentally got ordered of and I accidentally asked for a color I already had. Cause I was sitting there looking at it and I'm like, this color looks familiar. And then I uh, walked over to my color wall and I'm like, son of a bitch. <laughs> like, I didn't think I had this color. Surprise! You did. Alright. Oh, just that little pop of white on there. Really making that super bright. Our tree isn't gonna look, none of our trees are gonna look exactly like Bob's. And they, they really shouldn't look exactly like Bob's. Cause we do want a little bit of us in there. At the same time, it's really hard to completely match what he's doing in this medium. Like that's going to be super, super tough. 
I'm giving this guy a bit more snow. Than the other one, sort of. He's a little bit bigger. Right. I'm trying not to pull, I'm trying to come from up here. Not working too well. Sometimes I'm remembering we've got that stretched a little bit but that's okay we can still clean that up as long as our sh most of our straight edge is there we should be okay and I might be able to tuck this guy into a display frame and have it fit potentially might have to take the glass out though because he's, he's going to be pretty thick so if you do want to frame these guys um, glass will probably have to come out unless you're putting it in like a shadow box or something that has a deep a deep back on it This might look nice in a white frame. Don't know if I can get a white frame. If I can find an inexpensive frame at some point, we can put it in that. But most of the stuff that I tried to sell that we've done on stream, and there's only two, three things up, I think, right now. In the coffee shop, I really need to get the rest of the stuff posted. I just, I'm exhausted by the end of the day and it's like the last thing on my mind. Um, but uh, most of the stuff in the coffee shop, well actually all of it right now, comes unframed. It's just the item itself. Some of them are not fully standard sizes, so you might have to get a mat cut or find a mat to um, fill out the extra space to fit a frame size that's gonna that's gonna work for you but it makes shipping a little bit cheaper to not ship the frame and then I don't have to worry about the frame breaking in transit and I will say if I do end up framing anything and shipping it out the glass will not be included number one these things it's too thick with the glass in number two I'd be petrified the glass would break while shipping and besides I'd rather you pick out a frame that you're gonna love might try to take some pictures of it in the frame just for photo purposes. Right now, at the moment, on the couple of things in the Kofi store, shipping is free. I know it's a little bit more than what I was charging in Etsy, but. And I'm only shipping in the US right now. I don't have the money. To um, ship internationally right now. I'm sorry, guys. If finances were better, I would. But I just don't. Felt like somebody pulled into the driveway behind me. Like, I don't think they did. The husband shouldn't be on his way back yet.
Let's get that tapped in. Okay. That one kind of kind of just melted into the background a bit there. That's all right. So, this guy is so big because the other side of him is is off the edge so that's why all of our snow is kind of drifting to the one side here oh i need to work on i need to find my pinbacks is what i need to do I have some pins I have to make, or that I said I would make. I don't have to do it, but I've decided to do it. So, I need to make those for, or I'm making them for Zords. What he decides to do with them is up to him. But we will go from there. Oh, there's a cat behind me. Okay. I actually tried to start a little bit earlier today, but that didn't happen. It was a rough night sleeping. All the chaos from yesterday. It just... When the hell did I even fall asleep? I don't think I fell asleep till probably close to seven this morning. And something woke me up. I don't remember what. <clears throat> Oh, that's right. I woke up and the husband wasn't in the in bed. He was up. He was somewhere in the house. <clears throat> and then I'm laying there and then I hear Zuzu just yelping. Like screeching yelping and I'm like, "What the hell's going on?" And then I hear Russell saying, stop it and I didn't know who he was talking to and then I heard him telling Zuzu to stop and I'm like what what is happening and at that point I was like oh for for Christ's sake so I got up half asleep in a panic stumbled up into our our main pass-through room. It used to be the dining room, but we don't really have room in there for a dining room table right now because it's our main like storage overflow room at the moment. And uh, I'm like, for fuck's sake, what is going on? And uh, Russell's like, see, I told you. And I was like, what? He goes, my mother's playing with the dog. I was like, and I couldn't see his mom. And I'm like, where? And he's like, in your parents' room. And I'm like, she's not supposed to be in there. But she went somewhere yesterday um, that uh, she knew we weren't going to be happy about her doing. And with um, sickness cases upticking yet again in our area. And my dad already being ill with a lung infection. She's like, I'll self-quarantine when I come back. And I was like, does she understand what self-quarantine means? She's going to be wearing a mask when she comes out of her room. And he goes, yeah, she's, she's going to be hiding in her room. She's not going to be coming out very much. Except for when she absolutely has to. 
And when she does, she'll have a mask on. I was like, okay. And then last night, I, I wouldn't even touch her water bottle because I'm like, take your water bottle. Because at that point, I was just so mad. I just, I didn't want to. Because of the other shit that happened yesterday, I'm just like, take your stuff. And, um, I was like, and she was standing in the hallway and she said something. And I was like, and you're going to have a mask on when you come out of your room, right? And she's like, I can do that. So apparently this was not even <coughs> in her brain that she was going to be doing it. So I'm like, you have no idea what self-quarantining means, does it? Do you? That means only putting a mask on when you absolutely have to come out and be around the rest of us. <sighs> and then... She comes, I was like, I yelled, you're not supposed to be in there. And she comes out and she's like, oh, I'm sorry. It's my fault. I made the dog squeak and I was playing with him. And I'm like, you're not supposed to be in there. Regardless of a mask being on, he's already sick. He doesn't need to get sicker. You're not supposed to be in there. So apparently she was riling the dogs up and playing with them and for some reason when Zuzu gets um excited now I guess he starts shrieking like he's been injured or something and this is new he didn't used to do this um I don't know if it's old man dog syndrome or what but when he was younger he didn't used to do that so I'm like, sir, I mean, he'll do it with us too. And we're like barely doing anything. I'm like, relax. I'm just sitting here petting you. You're fine. But, um, and then his mom's like, oh, well, I was in the middle of making breakfast. And I'm like, well, then make your breakfast. Don't walk away from the toaster and leave toast in there. It, it's not like a pop-up toaster. It's like toaster oven. And if you don't time it right, then your toast burns. So if you're not sitting there watching it... <sighs> that was at 11.30. We had an alarm set for 12.30 because my dad has to be somewhere at 1. Or no, 1.30, but they were going to leave at 1. And I'm just like... <sighs> Y'all, I need a vacation. Can't with this. She is supposed to be leaving sometime in February again. I don't know when in February, but sometime in February. Okay, what we need. And I know a lot of people are quick to say, well, if she's that toxic, cut her out of your life. I can't. And before everybody gets all up in arms about, what do you mean you can't? Of course you can. Technically, yes, we could. But with the position that him and I are in at the moment, we can't. Like, financially, we can't. So, um, it's complicated. There's a lot of wheels in motion involving it that we literally can't. Because trust me, if we could, there are days we probably would. Because Russell's not thrilled with her behavior lately either. And I am from the school of just because you're blood related doesn't mean that blood relations can get away with shitty behavior and that you have to tolerate it. No, no. I 
there's, there's a lot more. Some of you know a little bit more in depth the story, <laughs> the saga, the never ending saga. But, um, you know. Right now, my nerves just, they just need a vacation. I need to mentally reset from all of this nonsense. But that's not gonna happen anytime soon. Because we certainly can't do a staycation, right? Because we don't have the money for that. And we don't have a babysitter for that because we need, we need a, a parent sitter, we need a pet sitter. We need a house sitter. We, we, we need a, we need some sort of sitter. We need an all the above sitter that we trust. And the sitter that we, well, the house pet sitter, parent sitter that we used the last time we went away, um, they're super busy. So even if we had the money today, they wouldn't be able to uh, help us out because they've got too much shit going on. I mean, we, we paid him pretty well the last time. I think we paid him like two or three hundred dollars because my dad's a lot to deal with. But, uh, and he had a lot of back and forth between where he was living. Um, he stayed here a few days, but other days he was back and forth because of work and stuff, so. Can't really give him too much shit about that, but he was checking in. You know what, this is two different trees, I think. I think there's another tree further down here. Okay. So now we have to put in that other tree trunk. Enough about that bullshit. Alright. We don't need a lot of this, because this tree is not... Too huge. This is just kind of a mess of bits and pieces. I'm just kind of mixing this up and I'm gonna kind of pull a chunk off of them here. Alright. So. Let's see, how long does our friend here need to be? Well, anybody have their eyes on any new games coming out? Anybody excited for a new game? I have a couple on my wish list on Steam that I'm interested in. Don't know if I'm gonna like them. I don't think the one's out yet at all. Um, there's one that's been out, there, well there's a couple that have been out for a little bit that I want to get. I want to get Garden Simulator, as silly as it sounds. Um, yeah, this is Tope, so. This is Tope from the Big Twist value line. Alright, 
I'm gonna have to pull this down just a little bit so that I can see. Where are edges taking place here? Sorry if I'm in the way. I don't think I am. So I might have to. Add a little bit more to this guy. I went to thicken him up a bit. Oh yeah, because that's really super skinny. Well, he is almost identical in color to our medium gray that we've got. going on behind this cloud. Almost. Their, their shades are actually super close. Okay, you can kind of see the difference um, in the camera. So that's good. That's something. We're gonna have to thicken this boy up just a little bit. Because he's a little skinnier <coughs> than I want him to be. Sorry about that. I heard a bunch of like high pitched squealing that sounded like people or kids, and I was very confused because there shouldn't be that. But um, it sounded like they were on our front porch, and uh, I was like, Our doorbell doesn't work. I don't know. There's been a doorbell on the like next to our front door forever, it doesn't work. It, it was there when. When the mother-in-law bought the house, we, we don't know what it goes to. And sometimes people will push it thinking it's a real doorbell and they'll just stand there and it sounded like they were on the porch, so. I was very confused. You okay? Uh-huh. <clears throat> you guys were back early. No, we're not. Early for there. I was expecting you not to be back for another hour. But yeah, no, that was that was weird. Uh, they were walking, I guess, through our front yard, and that's why it sounded like they were on the uh, front porch, I guess. I'm trying to line this up with the mat, and I don't need to, but I keep trying to do it anyway. Alright, so let's see about getting this guy all sorted and in place here. Need to Picking him up a bit. He's a little thin.
So, um, I'm going to try to do another build session in our Challenge Planet Zoo game. Um, maybe tomorrow, maybe Wednesday. I don't know which day yet, so make sure if that interests you that you have your notifications turned on here, or that you're following on Twitter, either place. Um, we tend to post there. I can't say for sure yet because, or I don't even know what time it's going to be. Um, it could end up being near normal stream time. It could end up being um, after we've had dinner and we're we're settled in. I don't know yet. It kind of depends on what the husband ends up doing with our friend because his work schedule is all borked this week. But if there, I think he said something about our friend has to have some plumbing issues fixed and I think that might be taking place on game time for their D&D game on Tuesday, so that might be canceled. So if that in fact is the case, and I don't know, um, I don't know uh, how available the friend needs to be, so I don't know if they're just gonna sit there and like watch a movie together or something while the plumber's there. Cause like they'll, they'll watch something over Discord. And hey, how are you? So yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll try to get that. We'll try to get at least one session in on my side of the Planet Zoo build um, this week at some point. Like I said, don't know what time that's going to happen though, unfortunately, or what day. That's going to be a bonus content stream <laughs> for sure. So how are you doing, uh, T-Weasel? Hope you are well today. We are working on tutorial number four from the Joy of Painting Season 3 from Bob Ross. I have had to change or adjust some of the colors a little bit to fit what I had available and what I can make work because yeah Bob's using paint and is using stuff to shade on this one hardcore and uh, we all know that fiber doesn't want to blend like paint so <laughs> doesn't quite work that way but uh, that's what we're working on there these two are very close in person so I'm surprised they look like there's a separation there. Um, we're currently trying to work through Bob Ross season 28 episode 4 but with acrylics. Yeah I have done that um, a little bit. Um, I did one or two in acrylics. It, it wasn't too bad. Um, let me see if I can put the tutorial in here. Okay, so there's the link to the tutorial on YouTube if anybody wants to go see that. That's what we've got paused 
in the um, bottom corner there. I do have the tutorial from him muted currently, just because I don't want to get in trouble. But, um, because <laughs> I, I cross-platform, I'm not cross-platform streaming, but um, I archive the live streams on the YouTube channel, so... Um, yeah, so I have to kind of keep in mind of uh, audio issues and things. That's why I'm not playing music or anything, because music that's some of the music that's okay on Twitch, YouTube's like, no, 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 no. Or it's okay at the moment, but then that part of the stream gets muted on playback and uh, on Twitch, and that kind of makes it difficult when you're exporting to play the thing on the other platform, and people are like, why is there a section of sound missing? So, you know... It's just easier <laughs> and less of a headache um, to do it this way. I used to use Pretzel, um, the free version, and then they updated the free version, and um, it was there was a period where I wasn't exporting the VODs, and um, I had a hell of a time getting the bot to do the accreditation that it was supposed to be doing for pretzel like i gave it permissions and everything and it wasn't posting it and then i finally got it working after hours of aggravation and then i was like oh check out they had all these new channels i was in the free streamer friendly version okay I was looking at all these new channels that there were, and I was like, oh, check this out. Oh, let's try this. Oh, let's listen to this. And so I was just kind of messing around with it, exploring the options. And then the VOD got muted. You've been told that the new OBS lets you put audio on a separate track, and you can set to not catch for the VOD. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, so I, I stopped using pretzel after that. I was like, well, this is dumb. So I'm like, fuck that. So I'm just like, yeah, no. No, no, no. I, I ain't got time for this. So I was like, we'll just we'll just go without. That's fine. That's fine. It, it's less aggravation for me in the long run since, you know, I am exporting this stuff to another channel, so trust me, I'd like to have all the, the fun stuff, but it's not worth it. <laughs> In the end, I don't want my channel having problems over there. That channel's been around for a long time, so I just, I don't, I don't have time for that shit. <laughs> just don't. We might not have all the bells and whistles, and we're a pretty simple stream over here, but I'm not that techie, so simple's good. It's amazing that we got the the follower and uh, raid and, and um, donation alerts finally put into place, although I don't know if the donation wards are actually working. I know the raid ones are, and the follow ones are, and the subscriber ones are. You know, when Twitch and stream elements cooperate. But, you know. I'm just glad that the flamingo noises that we put in for the sound alerts haven't gotten me in trouble, so I'm like, okay, that's good. You never know what YouTube's gonna get pissy about, I swear. Not that my channel on YouTube is monetized, I don't have that big of a community over there. Um, I don't have enough followers or subscribers over there, and um, I don't have enough watch hours. But they said they're going to be implementing new systems and adding new ways for you to get monetization over there, but they haven't rolled those out yet. So we're just putting the snowy highlight on the edge of this tree. <clears throat> Your YouTube channel is dead, you haven't posted in about a year. Yeah, I went through a phase where I wasn't posting anything. Um, when I first started posting stuff on YouTube, um, 
Oh god, that YouTube channel is like 11, 12 years old, something like that. Um, I had made a um, World of Warcraft, <clears throat> excuse me, there goes my voice again. Um, I've made a World of Warcraft machinima and uh, was just kind of digging around. It's it's so bad to go back and look at it now. I'm just like, oh, this looks horrible. But, you know, the technology was different then. It's not as good as it is now. So, um, it's gonna look a little... Ugh. But, uh... I had made one. And, um did okay and then I made another one those bastards took me forever because um, I only had limited amount of time around my job to make them the second one took me <clears throat> oh maybe eight or nine months to make it was a lot of editing and a lot of figuring out effects and stuff and um Let's put it back in the bag. Right. And uh, that one's my most popular video on the channel. The second one. <coughs> Hold on. <coughs> Sorry, you guys. My sinuses are draining city and it's terrible. I'm not actually sick. It's just my sinuses are. Sinuses hate me. Um. So the second one I did on the channel was my most popular one. It was on the, the channel used to be a different name, and um, I changed the channel name at one point. More recently, so the made by and the credits on that video is what the old channel name used to be. So I'm like, oh, I forgot about that. And I do not have, that's right, I'm gonna go back to right now. Um, <clears throat> I think I need this color. Oh shit. I'm just dropping everything. And, oh, what happened? Let's pin let go. And what is happening? Stop it. I've got my bags of fluff hanging next to me for this project, and I've got them hanging up with clothespins. The clothespins got caught in the in the plastic on the top of the bag. <clears throat> but that chat that video was the the second one was the highest viewed video on my channel to this day. Um, I think that one's at, last time I checked, I think it's at 157,000 views, 153,000, something like that. I can never monetize it though, because it was, um, it does have a claim on it because I used a, um, a popular song at the time. That is what it is, you know. I would never try to monetize that video anyway. All right, let's advance the tutorial here and see what we got coming in. It's not a, it's not a strike, but it is a claim. So that's all right. It's just if I ever did monetize that video, I wouldn't get the revenue. It would go to the other person. But now YouTube has their music safe library, or their YouTube safe music library, for stuff that you can use <clears throat> and not get in trouble using. So the speed felts that I've been doing, um, or any time-lapse stu stuff I've been doing, I've been using the music from their library. It makes life a lot easier. Okay, so he added in like a ridgy, a ridgy, a snowy ridge line. There we go. Um, yep. Ooh, what are you doing? 
What are you doing, Bob? What are you doing? Oh. Ah! Add! No! Shit. Hold on. YouTube? Hang on. Let me... Let me pop that... What the hell? I'm sorry, I'm looking at this... This ad... And it was an ad for, like, flamingos, some kind of flamingo-themed cereal. But it's not a real product. And I'm just, like, mystified, and I'm like, uh... Okay... Um... Sorry, I'm just completely mystified by that. Okay, it was an ad for Grammarly, of all things. Um, you're setting up your stuff for painting? Yeah, I, I need to get back to painting. We've done some of the Bob Ross stuff with the oil paints. And the oil paints are okay, but they're such... Like, I have his stuff. And the it's okay and it does blend oh okay he's putting the sticky limbs on the tree trunks that he put in earlier for some reason he's doing it now okay well we can go back and do that in a second let me backtrack here I I'm really unhappy with the camera angles on this one You've never done painting, painting, you usually paint nail polish on glass. Cab Cabon guns, what is that? <clears throat> well, you saw an episode of Bob Ross that gave you an idea, so you're trying it? Oh yeah, I mean, you might as well. Um. I don't like the oil paint and the fact that it takes forever to dry. Um, we have pets, so I have I don't have anywhere sacred where an animal can't get to. Cabochons, they're small glass. Oh, okay, okay, I get you now. Cool. I just didn't know that's what they were called. Um, I know what you're talking about, but um. I usually, what am I doing here? Um, let's go with a medium gray. No, that's too, where's medium gray? There's medium gray. Start with that. Um, but since the oil paint takes so long to dry, sorry, my brain's all over the place. I'm trying. Um, <laughs> Oh, look, a squirrel. Um, it's tough. Like, we had to get a huge storage container. And um, I had to drill holes in the side of it so that there was airflow without the container cracking because it was plastic. And uh, we set up dowels in the in the um, container to kind of like make an impromptu drying rack that I could put the lid on to keep the animals from bumping it or getting their fur in it because the oil paint takes so long to dry that it is effing maddening. Um, so the one you're working on involves colored gesso for the background trees and then liquid clear and colors over the top of it. Oh, neat. And you're trying to, you're going to try it with the clear gesso and the acrylic. Oh, I've not used the clear gesso. Specifically for the acrylic meant for glass painting, so it's very, very, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get you. That'd be fun. 
definitely sounds like an interesting project. I'm just trying to get some of this medium gray here. I'm going to start with our darker bits on this ridge line. So this tree actually probably should have been a little bit further down, but oh well now. I think something's going to sit here anyway. The, the house might be sitting here. So that might be the, that might not be that much of an issue cuz I think the roof's going to cut into this area anyway. So that might not be so bad. Sorry, I I'm out of cough drops. I don't have any, so I had a piece of candy cane that was left. I'm like that'll do. Try to get my voice back under control. But um I've heard the clear gesso mentioned in a couple of, um, in a few videos that I've seen on YouTube. I haven't used it myself though. I still have a pretty good sized can of the white gesso that I'm still working through. But, um, yeah, so like it was taking months for these, these Bob Ross paintings to dry and the one series I followed with it, I did little tiny four by four mini canvases. I kid you not. <laughs> Cop drops like 90% sugar anyway, so our candy would probably represent. Yeah, it's like, that's what I had, and I just like broke a little tiny piece off of a cherry candy cane. I'm like, this'll do. Because the water wasn't doing it. So, um, but, uh, it was like four by four, right? Kid you not in this little container it took like six months to dry and I'm like are you kidding me I think it's because it was in the container and the airflow wasn't that great but when I did the Bob Ross stuff on wood slices even though I had gessoed the wood slices it dried in like three weeks I don't it was in the same drying setup I don't know what it was I don't know what it is it was so bizarre crazy so, I mean, I feel bad that I had spent all that money on the Bob Ross paints and now I don't really use them. But I just don't think oil's my thing. I'd rather do acrylic or slightly watered down acrylic on watercolor paper. Um, I'd like to mess around more with uh, gouache. I've done a little bit with the gouache. Um, the one painting I did it almost looked velvety and I was just so intrigued by the texture when it finished like by the look of the texture because it looked so soft but I haven't really done much with the gouache since and in fact that tray of jelly gouache has long since dried out I need to see if I can revive it I just haven't had time You've done gouache, you're also dipping your toe into watercolor. I have watercolors, but I'm actually super intimidated by them. Like, I don't know what to do with them. And I know the stupid, I, I know it's stupid. The answer is paint with them and mess around with them. But I'm like afraid to use them and it's, it's ridiculous because there's a ton of them. So you got baskets from Dollar Tree to put over your acrylic boards to keep your kitty out of them and um, you bought cheap artist loft set tubes of gouache and you have been making your own watercolor. Oh wow! Made your own watercolors. Found a lady on TikTok who demonstrates easy techniques and you're starting there. Wow! Cool! I've got a whole bunch of the watercolors. Um, I had some cheap sets or some cheap tubes and then I bought a slightly more expansive set. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to try these out. And then I got super intimidated by it and I'm like, um, I don't know what I'm doing. 
and I backed out. I lost my nerve. <coughs> Which is ridiculous, because you're not going to learn unless you try it. And I know this. But, uh... Then I found this. And this has been my new jam lately. It's a little bit more... Um, time consuming? Kinda? Because... You know, you, you don't, with the size of this projects that I make and the level of, uh, I don't really want to say complexity because they're not that complex, but they are more complex than like, you know, just some simple shapes and silhouettes. Um, they do take more time to do and to complete. So, I like it, but it's not something that we're going to have a finished piece on at the end of the day. It is a little more time consuming, it is a little slower, but it's really kind of fun to, to watch it all come together. Um, you also do cosplay and you have a ton of expired eyeshadows, did you know that? No, I didn't! Oh wow! And uh, you like to say your hobby is collecting hobbies? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I can see that. I mean, you know, I've got so much stuff. I have to rein myself in. For a while, I was making sock puppets. Um, in fact, that's what the first mascot of the channel was, was one of the sock puppets I had made. I think her emote is still on the channel somewhere. And then I was like, you know what, I just decided to lean into my my love for flamingos, I think, last year, and we changed up the, um, the, the channel icons and emotes and stuff. Water color binder is just gum arabic, water and bacteria inhibitor, which... Honey works great. Oh, nice. Fascinating. Oh, I did not know that. Like, I know some people, you know, I think I've seen videos where um, people are like, yeah, we're going to make our own watercolors. I never actually watched them, but that sounds like very interesting. There's been times where I've been tempted to buy a huge ass box of just plain white roving and then dye it but then I was like girl you don't have the room to do this because <laughs> this shit's gonna need to like drip dry and stuff and the cats are gonna be playing with it there's like no like I don't have an office or a studio or anything. If I had dedicated office space that had a door to the room that I could shut to keep the animals out of, that would be something different. But we're really tight on space in this house. It's a long story, but that <laughs> there's just there's just no space for anything. Eventually, I would like to have a small tiny alcove or bedroom or something that I can just use as an office workspace and stuff but we are far from being able to do that at the time being as it is I, I've got so much crafty stuff my yarns taking over our room that's why I need to get on getting my new yarn fluffed that I got for Christmas. Because I try to prep the colors ahead of time just so that way when I want to work on something I've got the colors all ready to go. Dyeing roving is not hard but it is a little bit trickier than dyeing yarn or fabric. Yeah, like I was thinking about it and I'm like, you don't, like you're probably not gonna get the same color consistently or 
you know, you're going to be mad if you're working on this one shade and then you run out because you didn't dye enough. And so I, I thought about it, but then I was like, you know what? It's probably going to cost me more to try to custom dye the colors than it is to just buy the yarn and do the prep work for it. So I was like, interesting idea, friend, but uh, let's be realistic here. That's probably going to cost you more money in the end right now, which we don't have. <laughs> so, live in a townhouse and aspire to a small house with a tiny house out back for your crafty art stuff. Oh yeah, that would be great. You have to re constantly remind yourself, I don't need all of these things. Yeah, I've got, I've got way too many. I've got way too much stuff. But the yarn, since I'm, I'm into this, like. I, I like this because I don't have to worry about the yarn drying out like I do with some of my paints and stuff, but I do still want to paint and I do still paint a little bit when I have a moment, but um, I haven't painted recently, but I actually prefer to use um, the acrylic craft paints over the tubes of the artist paints. And I mean, they, they might be a little bit thinner. So it might take an extra like coat or two, depending on what you're doing. But I'd rather use that than and spend like a dollar or like 75 cents or the last time I checked Apple Barrel, which was a while ago, admittedly, um, they were like 50 cents a bottle. Um, I'd rather do like two or three coats of that than spend like $5 on a tube of color of like, and a small tube at that of the artist paints. So, and then I can get more paint for my money. So. <laughs> I'm terrible. Um, but yeah, I do. It's just cheaper for me to buy the yarn. The yarn I got on sale for Christmas um, from Lovecrafts. Uh, the paint box, Simply Chunky. I don't have one of the balls right here. There are 149 yards on the paint box, Simply Chunky from them. Um, but it was on sale for, oh, what was it? $1.99, $1.66. We had found like a Black Friday sale or something on the yarn and I was like oh, that's amazing deal I mean they're usually like $3.99 which is still cheaper than the big twist stuff from Joann's but they're not there's not as much in the skein as um, like big twist is bigger has more on there it's like a more normal sized skein of yarn but it's okay because I'm not speed demon speed demoning through all of the colors, so that's fine. But yeah, I do try to get a bag of each color of yarn fluffed when I get it, so I have it ready to go. And I still have about probably 15 balls of yarn, maybe 18 balls of yarn that I still need to fluff that are still sitting in the box. I need to get them out of the way. <laughs> yeah, you, you buy the, the thinner acrylic to use for pores since you already have it. That is what you used to paint with. And yeah, they're over a dollar now. Oh wow, yeah, so yeah, some of them some of the places have gone up. I think at Walmart they were fifty cents, but like I said, it was months ago. And with the way prices have been fluctuating so hard. Hard I yeah, it's it's crazy. I still have a bunch of paint that I need to use. I have a bunch of watercolor paper too. And um I actually kinda like painting with the acrylic craft paint and adding a little bit more water to them and using them on the watercolor paper. I'm like committing a cardinal sin and like everybody 
in the acrylic painting world, like, gas was like, oh, don't add water to your acrylic paint. I'm like, fuck off. So I'm like, I'm gonna fucking do what I want to do. Who, who are you? Um, oh, it was just cheap stuff that was on sale. Um, what the hell was it? Canson? Let me see. I've got it in the drawer next to me here. This was our test sketch. Um, I have it in the drawer next to me, but it's not that drawer. Um, oh, good. I'm just knocking over everything. Um, just Canson, 140 pound, 140 pounds. It was on sale. It's probably old, so I don't know if the sizing is still good in this one, but it looks all right. Cold press. I think it's cold press. Yeah, cold press. It's a little dusty, but yeah, it's like, I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of money on something. I don't know how much I'm gonna use so since I was just messing around they had had like packs of it on sale on uh, Amazon so that's kind of what we went with there all right so we need to it's hard to get this angle conveyed here probably should have Put this in first. So I have to get up in here. Before I put that tree in, but oh well. Too late now to worry about that. Once a year, the local Blix does a huge clear-out sale on different kinds of papers. Oh, that would be nice. I've never been to a Blix store. We don't have one around here. We have Joann's local, which is really small. For the size city that we're in, I'm actually really surprised that, that they're like a hole in the wall. It's it's so tiny in there. Um, so we have Joann's and we have Hobby Lobby. And I try like hell not to shop at Hobby Lobby. I mean, I used to before because that was like, they had the sales, but they've just pissed me off too much and I just don't want to give them any more money personally. But I understand that some people might not have a choice. That might be their only, their only um, craft supply store near them. So I, I don't, I don't judge other people for shopping there. That's fine. You you do what you need to do. I'm just not giving them any more of my money. Craft warehouse. That sounds fun. We don't have one of those either. Are they newer? Okay, I used to work for AC Moore. So, um, way back in the day. I worked for them for about six years. They've they've been out. They went bankrupt during the pandemic. Um, local to Oregon. Okay, okay. So AC Moore was kind of like the Michaels equivalent on the East Coast. Um, they hadn't quite spread nationwide yet, but they had been working on it before they um, before they went bankrupt. I think when I left them. That was a dangerous place to work in for my, my bank account, let me tell you. Um, when I left them, I think they were just down to Georgia, or they might have just opened a store in Florida. And um, I'm trying to think, where was their, how far west had they spread? I don't think they had spread that far west. I know they had some stores in Pennsylvania. They did have at least one store in Maine because one of the managers, one of the assistant managers we had, ended up getting his own store to manage. And that's where they sent him. Um, 
I know there were stores in New York, Pennsylvania. Oh god, I have to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, maybe Virginia? It's not really west, though. Yeah, I think they were mostly east coast states. Excuse me. But, um... Yeah, I worked for them for six years. I did, like, six months of general stocking in the unfinished wood department and then um like the wood the craft paints the stencils all that and then about six months into being there they bumped me up to a merchandising position for the kids crafts department and i did that for i guess two and a half years transferred stores briefly for like maybe six months and ended up in the um, in the floral department merchandising that and I had no idea what the hell I was doing over there they were trying to tra train me which went horribly because the only person that really was giving a shit about trying to train me um, was one of the buyers for the department that worked out of our warehouse and um, I only got to see her like once a month so that was fun I, I never saw the chick that had been taking care of the department um, in between them having a dedicated merchandiser for it because she was merchandising another department and I think she hated me so I was like okay um, not only was I the new person, I was the new person from another store, so... <laughs> from another store out of state, so yeah, n none of them really talked to me. But that's okay. Um, I was there about six months and ended up coming back to my original store. And when I came back, I couldn't have my merchandising position back in Kids Crafts because somebody else had taken over and they were still there, so they put me on front end wasn't really thrilled about that, but yeah, it was tough not buying everything because you see everything when it's coming in and I had access to like all of the merchandisers and the lady that did all the displays for the store for the different products. I'm like, oh, what's this for? Oh, tell me about this. This looks fun. So like I was always picking their brains and stuff. I'm like, what do you do with this? And, um, you know, so seeing all of the new merchandise come in was very dangerous. And uh, we also had a 20% employee discount, which was also very dangerous. So, what is that noise? I'm hearing fire in there. Okay, I think I'm hearing fire trucks. We live in a kind of, not really rural town, but um, it used to be a farming community. It's still partially a farming community, but a lot of the people that own the large land acreage are starting to sell it to the, the subdivision developers. So it's becoming a lot more subdivision land than farming land at this point. But there's like one main road that goes through town and we live on it. And we're like surrounded by businesses. Like there's a church across the street from us. There's a daycare like three doors down. There's a car wash on the opposite side of the street. There's not many residential houses on this street. There's a couple. But we're definitely on the main road. And this house is old, so it's not very soundproof. So we hear, like, all of the traffic. All of the sirens. They put in a bypass to go around the town. Sorry, I've got my eyes getting funny. Um, uh, we, uh... They put in the bypass 
to go around town for those that were just driving around the town that didn't need to go through it. Um, it did help with traffic a little bit. We don't have quite so many tractor trailers driving by our house at all hours. We still have a couple. But um, we don't have the plethora that we did because, I mean, there's a lot of chicken farms and stuff around here. So you don't have the tractor trailers with the cages of chickens going to be processed. Um, so you don't have feathers flying constantly and, and the smell of those, but we still have a few. But it's amazing that how many people still don't really use the bypass. We're excited we might be getting a McDonald's, like that's a big deal. I don't know what happened with it. There was talk that they were supposed to be moving in, that they had bought a section of land on this bypass and um, then work on it kind of just ground to a halt. So we hope we're still getting it. Some of the people that live here are pissed off about it. They're like, oh, all these businesses moving in, these big box places, they're going to ruin this town. And I'm like, if you were that worried about all of this business moving in. You should have been more pissed off about all of the subdivisions buying the land and putting in all of this housing than a McDonald's coming in to help pay taxes to the city. Like, let the McDonald's come in. Let the new gas station come in. Let them pay taxes. Then maybe we can get more improvements done in the city. Like, what? what is your deal? If you didn't want the city to, to improve and be this small little out in the sticks place that it used to be, then you should be fighting every new thing. Oh, people in this town don't make sense. No. But Russell and I didn't grow up here, so we transplanted. I'm originally from New Jersey. And he's originally from Arkansas, or, um, New Hampshire, and now we're in Arkansas. It's been very different from what we're used to. At least mentality-wise, so. That's fun. So we're just kind of putting in the shading of our snowy ridgy bank here. Or we're trying to. I know we're gonna have some of that sky color bleeding in, but that's all right. It'll be okay. It'll just kind of melt in and become one with our shadows here. <laughs> but you know, like whatever, guys. Whatever. <laughs> Like they're, they're, they're like lividly angry about this gas station and McDonald's coming in. I mean, we have a Sonic, so, and the Sonic's like, like four buildings down from us. So I'm like, okay, they're like, we want more mom and pop stores here. I'm like, do you have the money to fund them to get started? Cause you know, it takes work. It takes a lot of funds. Like, there's a storefront space downtown, in our downtown, um, and, uh, you, like, blink and you're through the downtown, um, that a quilting store had been in. The Sonic's not that good here. As some of the people that worked there have been talking on Facebook and they're like, yeah, I worked there for like two weeks and quit because it wasn't that clean. And I'm just like, oh Lord, I don't think I'm going to eat there again. But, um, they're super expensive for here. But, um, but, uh, shit, where are they going with this? Oh yeah. So there's a, um, there's a storefront that a quilting store had been in. They had all kinds of bolts of fabric on the walls and 
all kinds of quilting supplies. No, I don't quilt. Um, and like, I think they were doing like quilting lessons or stuff upstairs. And I saw a sign on their window a couple weeks ago that said they were going out of business. I was like, oh, that's sad. Cause a lot of people around here do quilting and sewing. And I just looked at Russell and I was like, you know, if we had the money, I would love, 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 love to take this space and make it like a general arts and crafts store down here. Like, like paint, paint your own ceramics kind of thing. And, you know, yarns for like knitting and crocheting and, and like crafts to get the kids, you know, do like little kid craft time one day a week or something for like a couple bucks. Something, you know, I would love to do that. The, the space is, is pretty good for it. I don't know if there would be enough kilns, enough space for the kilns to do the, the drying. I don't know how deep the back of the store goes, but something. It, it just, but then again, I don't know how high rent is down there. Like we have a, a non chain, I guess you would consider it a mom and pop at this point, um, coffee house. Um, and they've got like a small bakery space next door to them. They're kind of the same building now. We've got a chain Mexican restaurant out on the, the, the bypass, the road that goes around the town. They used to be in town, but then they moved out to the bypass road because on the bypass road they can serve alcohol. Oh, no problem. And we have like a grocery store that's tiny. So, and I think one car wash, maybe two. And maybe two gas stations. Yeah, I probably should have put this ridge line in before we put that tree in, just to make things easier, but I didn't, so. All right, so we got that in place. And we don't quite have the same angle that um, Bob got, and I had a feeling I was gonna have trouble with getting that angle in. <clears throat> but, you know nothing for it at this point. Save me some solid stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I know I don't want you to destroy it all before I've even had any. Oh, That's my dinner tonight. But, uh, you know, I was really confused about the, the brown sugar earlier. Sorry, I'm talking to my husband. Because I thought one of them did it, and I'm like... No, I was worried about them, like, opening it and not putting it in a, in a bag I was like, where's something? the inner bag? Because I've been leaving it double bagged. And then I was weirded out, and I'm like, <clears throat> who touched my brown sugar? No, my mom's the one that's making that tonight, right? Because your mom seems to be failing to understand what self-quarantining means. Did she ever walk down and get her lottery tickets? Yes. Because my alarm went off and I'm like, oh, I'm so tired. And I was like, a few more minutes and I sat the Kindle back down and then I woke up to Zuzu coming in tapping around and I heard the dog water bowl getting tapped and I'm like oh I was like all right buddy give me a second and then he jumped up and sat full on my chest and I'm like yes I know water I'm coming and um I got up gave him water and he left 
and I was like, what time is it? I was like, oh, okay. I didn't mean to quite sleep quite that late, but I'm still exhausted. Oh, so that that second run I did last night, uh -huh. um, a little over five thousand. So I think we're at 112, but tokens went back to 154. And I have not had time to pop in today. Are you doing anything with Tyler? Do I need to be done by a certain time? No time, Alright. Now, did you cancel D&D &D for tomorrow? I didn't know what the I status, not. I didn't know what the status was with the plumber coming. Okay. Were you two still gonna try to do something, or is he gonna be preoccupied with the plumber that entire time? I really can't answer that. I don't know. Okay. Because if you guys aren't, then I'm gonna do um, a Planet Zoo session on my side of the zoo. If you aren't doing anything. But that means I'm going to need the save file. Oh. Just wanted this to come up a little bit higher. It wasn't quite high enough for where I wanted it to be. take a look at this. So again, you don't have to do this part. I just do this because it just makes things lay a little bit better. Alright. Alright. What was that? That was the medium gray. Um... I'm gonna grab some of our soft gray next and start to work some of that in. This is probably gonna be like super bright. Alright, I kinda want this, I don't want it too thick. I want it a little bit wispy. I know that's a hard descriptor, but... Oh, welcome back! You have no Prussian blue or Indian yellow. Hmm. Prussian might be close to, like, a navy. Or maybe a navy with like a little bit of black mixed into it just a teeny tiny bit um maybe i don't know what to do about the indian yellow though indian yellow is actually a little orangey phalo blue impression blue are listed you have the phalo okay Um, I wonder if you could mix a little bit of black into the phalo. You have a mustardy yellow. That might work. That might work. Um, although mustardy yellow might be a little more like okra, the, the yellow ochre. Excuse me, I call it okra. <laughs> yellow ochre. Um, The Indian yellow is actually like a orangey yellow. It surprised me when I pulled it out of the tube because um, it seems more to the orange side of yellow. 
And I'm like, they're calling this yellow? I mean, it doesn't look too RNG when you start using it, but straight out of the tube, it had a little bit of an orange tint to it. You're looking up the shades to see what they're technically supposed to... Yeah, like, it, it's kind of crazy. Or the shades on my tubes were off when I bought them. That's also entirely possible. Alright, so we're just kind of working in some some later highlighting sections. I probably should have done the black in here first now that I'm thinking about it. Probably would have been the wiser decision. Get some of our our darker shadows in here first. Because, you know, we, it's, it's challenging to follow Bob with this medium because we can't just, you know, blend it <laughs> like he can and make all of the shades happen. I actually have to sit there and advance it forward a little bit further than I necessarily would if I was painting it. To see the shades that he comes up with to figure out what I'm going to do. But Windsor Newton has it like a safety orange color. Farrell and Ball has it as a mustardy yellow. Huh. It's amazing that so many different companies would have these same shades so differently. That's crazy. Um, I'd say if you have like a straight yellow and a, a straight orange, I would maybe take the yellow and add a little bit of the orange into it. See what it looks like. Just just a tiny little test test a brush dab on the side just to see. Because that might be something that you're going to have to custom mix <laughs> to try to to find something that's going to fill in the blank. Like, I don't know if that'll work. It might. Maybe. Might have to add, like, just the smidgen of white to it. Like, just, like, barely a drop. Maybe. But that's, yeah, I think you're going to have to play with that a little bit. Right, so, he used liquid black on this, which is why this one's got me so confused. Because he sort of used a limited color palette. For him on this one. Number one, it was a night painting. Number two, he's got this liquid black on there. So he's using a lot of titanium white to, uh, that's a really harsh angle, but that's okay. Our angles are not going to be entirely the same as his on this one. Um, so he, he's, he's just leaning hard into the titanium white blending in with this, sorry, I'm shutting, in with this um, liquid black, and it's kind of maddening to a degree, because it's like, I can't get all these shades. I almost skipped this one. I, I really did want to skip this one, because I was just... I was struggling to to translate this to um, yarn colors that I could make work here because there's just so much shading. It may not matter as much either. This is supposed to be a thin translucent layer. Well, yeah. So I mean, 
sometimes we just kind of have to to make that executive decision to just be like, well, let's see what this does. So, I, I, like I said, I was originally going to skip this one, and then I was like, no, let's try it, because there's one already that I'm probably, although, yeah, I might have to skip. And I think I was planning on skipping it, because I think this season has his cowboy one in it. Where, like, two-thirds of it just looks like Modor, and it just looks like it's on fire. Mordor, how the hell you're supposed to pronounce it. Um, and it, he just has, like, so many micro shades of orange and red, and I'm like, I don't have that kind of colors, and it's just gonna look like a solid sheet of red. So, um, I think we're probably gonna skip that one. Because I don't think I can pull that one off with the shades that I have. But, and this is not even going to remotely look the same. <laughs> oh, thank you. It, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Because, like, I try to use close to the colors that he does. Which, you know, that's hard to do sometimes, because, you know, yarn and paint shades are not the same. <laughs> but, um, you know, we're trying, we're trying. But, uh, nope, dog's going potty. Husband's taking him out. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what we can make happen here. We need to flatten the back out of this. Like I said, you, this isn't a required step. I just find it makes things even out a little bit more on the front. And if I smooth out the back, I need to stop pointing that towards me. But uh, I do like this this felt sheet. I, I am liking this. I wasn't sure if I was going to. Um, be very careful if you order felt sheets from Amazon. Um, read the reviews. Uh, <laughs> Cause the ones I ordered were not the correct size. And um, they were supposed to be Oh, I think they were supposed to be eight and a half by eleven. Um, they were not. So these were the sh the felt sheets that we had been using. This is nine by twelve, the gray one. Yeah, that that ain't it. So. <laughs> The, the sides are too short. The length was okay-ish. Like, just on the nose. But, um... Uh, it's, it's not... It's not what it was supposed to be. The, um... Let's see here. Yeah, it's like... Seven inches and three quarters, a little over three quarters. It's like just shy of eight inches. And I'm like, really? I'm like, well, that makes it really hard to do eight by tens. Just a bit. Ah, oh, shit. Come on. I'm trying to get my T square hung back up. There we go. So it was really annoying. Um,. But these ones, um, these are working up really nice, this gray one. Um, I, these were from Joann's when I picked up the, the felt for the gingerbread house project. Um, I had bought extra, they were 25 cents a piece, they were on sale. Um, so, I mean, th that was great. And these are made with um, recycled plastic bottles in there, and I was a little afraid that it wasn't going to work up 
that well because of that, but it's been doing great. I haven't had too much shrinkage yet. Because the other stuff, like, the other stuff was really floppy and really um, soft. I guess the... I guess it's like a looser felt sheet. This one's pretty tight. This boy's pretty thick. And it, it varies from color to color, obviously. Because, I mean, this guy's stiff, but he's not the stiff felt. Um, the stiff felt is, is stiff, like a piece of uh, poster board. Um, this isn't that kind of stiff. And I do have a little bit of, of a bump out here from me pulling it up. So I have to make sure I don't... I don't pull on that edge too much more or else we're gonna have some problems but it's okay most of the straight edge is there we can trim that sucker a little bit even when we finish when we get rid of the border around this but if we get rid of the border we could just leave it as 9 by 12 and have a built-in mat but we'll see I mean that's gonna be a personal decision but um depends on how badly we fuck up the edge on the rest of it honestly <laughs> so we'll see if the edge gets a little too wonky the rest of the way around we might have to fully cut that but I don't have a 9 by 12 frame to show you what it looks like finished in a frame so couple of frames I do have I kind of grabbed from Dollar Tree while I was in there because budget has been hurting real bad. So we are still in the middle of the husband's disability fight with no end in sight. We are still waiting to get the next round of paperwork. lawyer hasn't told us of anything new that we need to do for them so and of course our insurance changed in the middle of it so I'm like great great wonderful wonderful the insurance that we were on our hospital doctor networks not going to be accepting anymore I'm like great fantastic so we they had another equivalent to what we were on through the state right now so we swapped over to the equivalent we'll see how equivalent they were or they are we don't know if we're gonna have to pay anything that good luck may the color gods be in your favor today. I'm always so nervous and indecisive when I start a new piece. I'm like, oh, I just kind of have to like close my eyes. I'm like, okay, we're doing this. I just have to make the decision and just do it. Even with this stuff, I have one that I want to do that's not Bob Ross following. Um, I found a reference photo on Unsplash. And I really want to work on that one because I picked up some embroidery hoops that I want to use as the frame on a couple. And I think I'm going to use the rest of that felt from uh, from Amazon that's not sized correctly for that. Because it's like a 4 inch, 5 inch? What size embroidery hoops are these? Mm, I think they might be 4 inches. 5 inches? Maybe they're 5 inches. I just haven't had the time to work on it. So I want to do this one. I set it up. I got all my colors figured out for, for what yarn colors I was going to need. And um, I'm like, yeah, we're going to do it. And yeah, I haven't had the chance to do it yet. So. 
I still have my list of things I want to do. Just life has been crazy. I, I've been super busy with the podcast and and helping the the lady that's in charge of that and website stuff for her. So I've just I, I'm like all over the place. Time has not been my friend lately. Plus we're trying to get the in-game currency to turn into a basically like a blizzard gift card so that we can buy um, Diablo 4. So I've been busy trying to work on that. There's just not enough time in the day. Okay, that should be probably good enough. I don't want to get too much black in there. That's, that's probably good for now. Alright, so let me close that up so you don't go wandering. Set that to the side. I think I'm gonna have to- oh, I still have some out. I think I'm gonna have to add another string on my wall. Because I think I need more room for my yarn bags, so... Husband's like, where are you gonna put this? Because we're, we're running out of space. And I'm like, I don't know, I need- I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to squeeze the last colors that we got onto the existing- existing uh, space. I'm trying. Definitely trying. But I just don't know if that's gonna work. We'll see. Oh, and I can't remember. I was... We were working on something during Christmas, the Christmas craft season. I cannot for the life of me remember what it was, but I was sitting here and I remembered having the thought of, I really thought I had many bags of like pinks and purples, but I couldn't find them. And I was so confused because I still have like the little floss bag size of the color sample. Of roving that I had picked up from from Amazon before I switched over to the yarn because I realized they don't give you very much um, in those color sample bags they're not really sample bags but th there's just not that much per color I was like yeah this isn't gonna work we need more volume um, and for what we're doing at least I was so confused because I could have swore we had them. I hadn't used them. Not all of them. Well, when I was rearranging my yarn wall, I would have it behind me if I could, but there's just not enough room in this house, and I don't have a second camera right now. I have a second camera somewhere, but it was being funny, and the, the quality of it wasn't great. Like, it kept... the colors on it weren't weren't quite right. I had to keep messing with the color settings and I was throwing up light bars and stuff because of the LED lights and everything. And it was just pissing me off. So we went to this camera, but this camera doesn't have control software, which I liked about the other camera. I had software where I could zoom the camera in and out and change how it was positioned and change the focus and stuff on it on that camera. This camera is a manual focus. Which, I mean, to be fair, the other camera I took autofocus off because the autofocus was making me dizzy because of how much um, talking with my hands and moving around that I was doing that it was blurry more than it was clear. So I would set the focus through auto and then I was like, when it got to where I wanted it, then I turned focus uh, autofocus off. But, um, this camera, I have to like physically go into OBS and zoom in and out with the with the size of the um, the camera window. So and that's a little annoying. 
but that's what we could afford at the time and um husband got this camera for me as a surprise because it was on sale and he's like oh look what i found and he was so proud of himself and i'm like oh thank you honey does it do this this or this and he goes oh i don't know it didn't he tried though And it's still a better picture than the other camera hat, so. Eh, you live and learn, right? So he's starting to stream one day a week on my channel. Um, temporarily. Because we are in a Planet Zoo build-off with each other where we have a he uh, went in and he made a zoo map he split one zoo in half equally as well as equally as he could and um mirrored sections laid out of different shapes and stuff on each side of the map and um, we have them numbered on each side identically, matching. And we set up a random wheel to spin to pick the biome that we need to build in. And then we also have another wheel set up for the number of species that we must include in our our building area. We can go over that number, but we must have a minimum number of X. And then we have to include at least one guest amenity of some description. Oh, this glitter is never going to go away. It's going to be the bane of my existence. I like how glitter looks. I hate dealing with it, though. I've got a couple pieces of glitter embedded into the felt mat, and I think I still have glitter in the rug, the, the area rug under my desk. I would rather not have this area rug there, but the floors are uneven in this place because of the way the house was built and the way it settled. So if I don't have the area rug under my desk for my chair to sit on, I will constantly roll when I sit down. It was worse on the other side of the room, like I'd be sitting there and the way my desk was situated, I would just start rolling backwards. I was like, oh, that's nice. But um, <laughs> fun times, fun times. So <clears throat> I tried a piece of cardboard and it worked for like a day. And then as the chair was flattening it, it uh, didn't, didn't work so good anymore, so I had to break down and get the cheap throw rug from, like, Dollar General. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Oh my goodness. That's terrible. Uh, my sinuses hate me and pick the worst times to be pains in the ass. Come here. I don't know what you are. Where did you go? You're not the same shade as the yarn. I think it's a little tiny piece of paper. <coughs> so, what time is it anyway? Five. Alright. Well, we haven't gotten much done today. Well, it did not work as expected. Maybe it will look better when it's dry. Well, I mean, yeah, I would, I wouldn't, I would let it dry and then see how you feel about it. And then if you're able to redo it, go from there. I had one of his things that I tried to follow the tutorial for, and it actually involved that liquid black stuff. And I was so mad because the liquid black was like water. I don't know if I didn't stir the can enough or if my can was old or something. 
Um, it was my first time using it. And it just seemed so much wetter than his had been. And I was like, I feel like something's wrong. And I started to use it and started to put the colors on top of it. And I was like, this, this is turning into mud. Like something's wrong. This doesn't look right. And I wasn't happy. So I grabbed one of my knives, my uh, palette knives, to be clear, and um, started scraping all of the paint off. And then I paused and, oh, ads. Sorry, didn't know the ads were running. And um, when I paused the, uh, I looked at it again and it looked better. And then I just turned it into something else entirely. I just scraped some like birch trees into the mess. And uh, that piece actually sold, somebody loved it. And I was like, oh, okay, sure. So what turned into a terrible mess actually worked out for a change. So I think I only have two things up in the Kofi shop. I moved to Kofi from Etsy because Etsy started doing some sketchy shit that I wasn't comfortable with doing. Um, they wanted my bank account and password. And password to verify my bank account. And I'm like, excuse me, you want what? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, sometimes you just have to go with it. So I was like, um, what's not gonna happen? Like it was their third, it was their third party a bank account verifier. Cause I guess there was some sketchy shit going on with some bank accounts from some sellers. And so they brought in this third party company to verify the bank accounts. And you had to give the third party your bank account, login, username, and password. And I'm like, they tell us to never give that to anybody. Why would I give it to you? And then they're like, well, if you don't want to do that, you can give us your bank account number and your routing number and we can verify it that way, but it's gonna take longer. And I'm like, Etsy already has this. Etsy has my bank account number. Etsy has my routing number. They were given it when we set up this thing. Why can't they give it to you? Or why can't I check a box saying they can give it to you? Why do I need to physically give it to you again? And I'm like, mm, that's a no. Um, I, I don't want to do that either. And some people are like, oh, just do it and just change your login name and password at the bank. Well, as we were further researching this, some people did do that. And then their accounts, their, their stores for Etsy, their accounts had holds put on them a month later after they had been verified because the third party site was apparently verifying the bank accounts every month and I'm like uh why why do you need to be in my bank accounts every month to verify something when you already verified it once again that's a hard no you don't need to be all up in my bank accounts. And we were finding out some other sketchy, shady shit about this third party company where they were like spoofing official login pages for, for Venmo and other stuff that um, wasn't exactly kosher. And uh, some people had their stuff. I don't remember if it was necessarily hacked but we'll say um, mishandled to keep my ass from getting in trouble from what I was reading 
on a couple Reddit posts. I mean, it's Reddit, so you can only take it with a grain of salt, but there was a lot of similar posts. And um, so I was like, yeah, no. No, 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 no. I don't want to deal with this third party verifier with a 10 foot pole. That's, I know some people still are dealing with them and that's a decision that is personal and you have to, to make on your own. Um, the bank account that I was using for Etsy, is it the same bank that all of our other personal accounts are tied into? And we have it set up so that we can transfer money from the mother-in-law's account to our account and vice versa when need be in our personal accounts. And this was a side account, but they were all with the same bank. And when you log into to, to my Etsy bank account, you could like, or when you log into our, our bank's um, login, you could see all of the accounts. And I'm like, oh no, 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 no. You don't need to see every single account that I have. And apparently the fine print on this third party verifier was like, they can check on your savings accounts. They, they can check on all of your banking stuff. And I'm just like, what? I was authorizing you to check this one account. You don't need to see the other stuff. So we're not going to do that. So I had to close the Etsy shop, unfortunately, because I wasn't, I was not comfortable with that. I did not want any parts of that. The husband didn't want any parts of that. And he's like, yeah, no, we'll, we'll find a different way. What did we decide on? The Etsy thing. Oh yeah, yeah, no. That, that was, that was a whole bunch of shady shit. And, and the deeper we were looking into the third party people whose name escapes me at the moment, because I just blocked the whole thing out of my brain. Um, they did not exactly have a stellar reputation. Um, they had been involved in several lawsuits and um, recent lawsuits, like like 2019 and stuff, and we're like, um, where they had to pay millions of dollars out because they lost, because their asses were in trouble um, about like sharing information that they weren't supposed to be sharing or renting information to other banks and entities that they weren't supposed to be doing and I'm like um yeah no 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 that's okay that is not for me I'm not getting involved in this sorry but we're closing the Etsy shop uh so I moved over to Kofi I haven't really gotten anything there but again I think I only have two things up right now um, I need to get the rest of the stuff posted But I don't think you know, people just aren't that familiar with Kofi right now because they they are a little bit of a newcomer. They haven't been around that terribly long, but so I think people are a little nervous approaching them. But from what I've seen, they seem okay. Um, they don't have like the ease of shipping, getting shipping labels and stuff, where you can just pay for the shipping like you could through Etsy. You have to like figure out how much it's going to be and and put that into how much you're going to charge somebody to cover shipping. So I'm doing free shipping, but my prices are a little bit higher than they were on Etsy just to make sure I get enough to cover the shipping um, on my end, just to make sure I've got enough. And to be perfectly honest, I think I was underpricing stuff on Etsy. Um, these pieces do take me quite a bit of time. Well, that was, you know, the excessive competition. Yeah. Well, there wasn't that much competition for this, but... There is a lot of, of sellers in there to get lost in the shuffle and stuff. I mean, I made a few sales over there, but, but yeah, so I mean, it just, Kofi just seemed like the better option at the moment because every place else that we looked at, they were charging all kinds of stupid ass fees and, and I'm just like, oh God. But the coffee shop I can have and still have the free membership, so I was going to connect Stripe, but then I was, mm, I got a little nervous about Stripe, so I was like, yeah, no, we'll just go through PayPal, because Russell's like, you can still use a credit card through PayPal. I was like, alright, well, we'll just do PayPal then, I already have PayPal set up. I, I don't want to, I don't want things to get stupid. Because, you know, I mean, now if you're able to set up a single bank account with a bank that 
you don't use for your personal stuff and that particular account is isolated then maybe the Etsy thing you can be okay with but I just really didn't want these people having the keys to the kingdom and needing the keys to the kingdom constantly and I'm just like I'm not okay with this we have too much financial stuff wrapped up into where my Etsy account was with that bank so is stripe better than paypal because stripe was starting to say that they needed access to the same sort of stuff that the third party verifier was going to need access to um with etsy and that made me pause and i was like hmm i don't know we didn't look too deep into stripe but I got nervous when I was seeing some of the same wording, so I was like, um, I don't know about this. Is this, is this okay? And then we both kind of got nervous. So we're like, let's just leave it at PayPal for now. And I know that's probably limiting potential sales, but... If I had the money, if I had the money, what did you just type? You should point out, you try to shut the fuck up during stream, but if she's going to be chatty towards me, I may as well chat her. <laughs> so you, I was not required to do too much for Stripe and you only did it once. Okay. Yeah, I'm still kind of unsure about them. Um, maybe if things start to pick up or the channel gets a little more popular, I might add Stripe. Um, it was just such a world of confusion when it, all of that happened. Um, I, and I just, and life went sideways and I never had the chance to go back and deal with it more. PayPal did some shady things, then when I called them out on it, they tripled down and you'll never go back to them. Hmm. Interesting. Never had a problem with them. But then again, I don't really use PayPal that much. Have it for some things. I did have it as a paying option. Somewhere. But I don't really make that many sales. I see. And now. And I, I couldn't get away because now I am banned for trying to get the make it right cheese. And I couldn't anyway because now I am banned for trying. Interesting. Yeah, we haven't had too many dealings with PayPal. Like, I do have the PayPal account but I don't use it very often. And I don't really, even when I had the Etsy shop, we weren't really making that many sales. Like I never made enough. I don't even think I made a hundred dollars off the Etsy shop, maybe 200 in two years, two and a half years. So you've heard other, you've heard several other people who had the same issue as you. They just didn't push back as hard as you did. Interesting. And then you have to decide if, if it's worth the financial loss of paying a lawyer and getting a lawyer involved and stuff. Stripe's been great. Hmm. Interesting. So you haven't had any issues with them? They didn't know that many people that had used Stripe, so I was uncertain how reputable they were, shall we say. Because that third party verifier that got linked up with Etsy just was alarm bells everywhere. I was like, oh no, 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 no. But you have made six sales total on your Kofi and have had several direct donations. Oh, interesting. So yeah, I mean I know I know a lot of people don't use PayPal as much anymore. 
but um, I have been tempted to add stripe. I don't know. We might take a look at it again at some point if um, the community gets a little bit bigger and stuff. Because I don't even really see that much traffic on the uh, the Kofi page at all. But then again, I also don't have that much time to promote <laughs> my own stuff because I'm so busy doing everybody else's stuff, which is kind of hilarious. Because by the time I get done, um, I, I, I kind of... Stripe issued everywhere. Okay. Yeah, it, it it's a lot, like... People don't realize how exhausting doing all of this is when you're trying to um, to keep on top of everything because then you have your social media platforms that you know you're trying to get yourself out on so it's doing the live stream or doing the the YouTube video and getting that up and then trying to do the promotions for it if if it's a video or whatnot and make sure you're letting people know that hey you know this is done this is out this is available we're doing this today. Um, it's tough trying to keep to a schedule when your life is crazy and um, and there's other forces at work that kind of mess up your time schedule at times and then you know needing to do if you are doing the live stream stuff you know you, you kind of need to go for like a certain amount of time you know figure out how many hours is about where you start to get people coming in and stuff and figuring out your shit and then I also manage I don't know if so you meant stripe is used every okay okay well I have to think about it um we might we might give it another look see in, in a little while um but I also manage the social media accounts or take care of the social media accounts for um, a podcast for a WoW community that um, I mod for. So I'm kind of like, I'm a mod for their Twitch channel and their Discord, but I also, um, I also do a lot of their website stuff. So we do, um, so it's for like a, it's a challenge community for, for World of Warcraft, for, um, for like the Iron Man challenges. And they've got a couple of other different challenges where there's like stripped down rules for what you can and can't do and, and things like that to try to get to max level without dying and stuff. So that's a lot. <laughs> um, it, it's become quite the, the beast over the past few years and um, so we do articles for holiday events that happen in game and we have to try to explain to people, okay, well if you're doing this challenge you can't do these things, these things are okay, these things will break the rules for that challenge. I write those, so um, <laughs> I've been doing those for a while now and uh, and that can be disruptive to my stream schedule because um, I can't always do those ahead of time and just have them posted to go live when the event goes live because we use the information that Wowhead puts out to see if there's any new updates or anything to the event that we need to be aware of and sometimes I have to delay that going up and then that bleeds into stream start time and and I'm just like Ugh. It, it becomes a thing and then I'm doing posts to promote those blog posts on on the website I'm like posting to, to Twitter and to Facebook and in our discord to saying hey this thing's available now and and then I have reminders about upcoming podcasts I have to post about a couple of days during the week and then if somebody hits max level in the game and they're 
they didn't break any of the rules of the challenge they were playing and then we do like a little celebratory spotlight post on them and then I have to get in contact with them or one of the other mods will get in contact with them and send me their information and then I have to write up the article about their their little run um, it's something that we do and that can take time it, it got kind of hectic there during Christmas because everybody was pushing or right before Christmas because everybody was pushing to hit um, level 60 before the new expansion came out and max level got moved to 70 so I was I was not even getting to bed till like 5 a.m. with all the stuff I was doing I mean I my sleep schedules really fucked but like I Um, for a while I wasn't getting up till about 2 or 3 in the afternoon and then I was up till like 5, 6, 7 in the morning trying to get all of the things taken care of that I needed to get taken care of and by the time I get done taking care of the stuff for the podcast my brain is toast I'm tired I've got other shit I gotta do <laughs> and then t you know doing my own social media promotions and, and posts and stuff kind of falls to the wayside and so I I need to be better about posting my stuff because I have the Kofi I have the Instagram um, we have the YouTube page I have my own Twitter and like I need to get better about doing the things like there's still a couple of things I think I need to post to Instagram? No, to Kofi. One of those that I never posted over the holidays and I'm like, shit. It just, it, it becomes background noise and I just, I get so tired that I don't think about it again. And then by the time I do think about it, I'm like, oh crap, wait, it, that was two months ago. <laughs> and I'm like, shit. So it, it's been tough. Finding the time to get all of the things done. It, it really has. And um, I've taken on a couple more things to do with the podcast. So um, that's also a time thing. Like, I would love to stream on Saturdays. And the husband ended up doing some streaming over holidays on Saturday. Um, I, I can't stream on Saturday. I would love to. I don't have time. Uh, by the time I get up, um, I have like maybe an hour or two to get myself mentally awake enough to do things. And, um, and then I have to start podcast prep for the show that day. Some days I'm co-hosting on the show so um, I don't like to get involved in anything that uh, might cause me to lose track of time because um, you know we do updates about who's in what standings and the different challenges and that report runs at like 4 30 my time and then I have to get all of that into the show notes and then the show starts at like 6 my time and it can take me almost an hour to get that report um, typed out and put into our show notes and all that stuff so it, it's a lot it's a lot and all of the stuff I do for them is, is volunteer so it's just I get to the end of the day and I'm just like what day is it what time is it like I'm just like I'm I'm tired <laughs> I'm tired and then with all the other shit going on in this household with all of that chaos but you know trying to keep track of my dad make sure he's okay because my, my parents live with us and we live with my mother-in-law in her house. It, it, it's a complicated thing, to say the least. But, uh, alright, let's see. That's, that's not great, but it's, it'll work. It'll work. We've got some different shading in there. So, oh, right, he did the, he did the tree branchy thingies. I forgot about that. Oh, oh. So he's got this tree that was kind of like this dark gray, right? 
like I think this tree and this might have been similar colors but for some reason on this one it looked a little bit lighter so I went with the taupey color on the yarn but then he grabbed black and put the branches coming off of it or like this color that he used on these trees and put the branch and I'm like Bob what because he didn't highlight them he just put them in so now the question is do we make them black or do we make them this color in the the sketch I made them black Whoop. all things are falling okay so in the sketch I made them black but, oh, we had an extra tree back here. But, um, it don't look right. So, here, let me advance the tutorial a little bit. So, see, it don't look right. Cause he never, let me see if I can make that bigger. He never goes back and puts any highlights on. And I'm just like, what? So there he puts the little sticky things on. Can we get another headshot of this? Oh, what are you doing? Oh, you're putting the other plane in. He does so little. I mean, there. You've got this, like, frosty trunk, and then you've got these... I, I can almost understand it being silhouetted against the sky. But it's so starkly black without any snow sitting on it. You would think it would at least be the same color as the tree trunk, and this really stumped me, because I'm like... Eh. And I didn't think much of it when I was doing the the sketch to try to work this out in my brain for what colors were going to go where, but now that I'm looking at it, this is going to look really weird if we stick black branches on this tree. And I don't know if I want to. We might omit the branches. We might just not do them. Because... Eh, I... I don't... I don't like it. It just... It looks weird. Oh god, Bob, what are you doing? Oh shit, so, okay, so he put the other plane in. Where did that start? So it started like up here. Right, like about, about here-ish. And then kinda, hmm. Should we fill this in with black? I almost wanna just bring the navy down further. Because it is giving our shadows a little bit more depth, and I know it's the sky color. But let me make him small again. Ah! No, 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 no. I don't know what I just grabbed, but I think that was a different, a different display. Let me bring that back down here so we can see what we're doing. So. You don't see that much of the navy in there. And I kind of... So he kind of starts at like here. There's like a little bit of like a V underneath of that tree. And then he kind of brings it this way.
But he's got more of this kind of in there. Let me grab my pen. See, this one was gonna be a bugger. Which is why I wasn't sure I wanted to do this one. Alright, so obviously, well, you know what? Let me grab the chalk marker. If we So, be up to there. Kind of, kind of thin up here, and then kind of. This is just um, a liquid. Excuse me, like a liquid chalk marker. Hang on, throat went dry. I thought I put it in there. I was using acrylic paint. I was like, wait, what? My uh, my Mubot caught my eye. <coughs> so it kind of comes down to about here. And then this kind of slopes a little bit more. <coughs> Down into here. So, if we have this, and through here, like it probably wouldn't make much sense to, to turn this to black now, so we'll probably just bring that dark denim color back down and through here so the chalk will eventually wipe off or you know we can get a little damp tissue and, and get rid of that so we can do a little something something like that Maybe. Like I said, our angles are going to be a little different than his. Mostly because they're not doing a full-on head, head-on shot on this. So, it's been driving me crazy. Okay, there he added that other tree that we had in the background. Okay, that makes a little more sense. Alright, so since we're going to do that. Alright, he highlighted the edge of that. See, there he goes again with the... It just doesn't look right. But then again, I don't see his reference photo. So maybe his reference photo... had those, had like the stark shadowy branches on the sky. Fair enough. But I don't think I'm comfortable adding them with this. So I think I am actually going to skip that. Alright, then he starts putting in the 
the cabin roof. Okay. That's going to cover like two thirds of what we're putting in, but alright. Is it though? Hang on. Okay, so not... Not that much. Alright. Um... I think we're just gonna go with it like this. I think this is gonna be our better option here. This one's been tricky. I mean, from a painter's standpoint, not really. It's, um, you know, just getting your shading right, but the layout, not that bad. But for this, this has been a challenge. Um, I think, looking at the time here, um, I think we'll pause here because I think this is a good stop point today. Um, hmm, are any of my people? Any of my people go in here? Let me see. The the raid feature doesn't always show me everybody that's that's doing things that I would would like to know if they're doing things. Um Alright. Is anybody any of my crew? I don't see any of my crew going today. Alright. Monday's a tough day. So I don't see any of my peeps that I prefer to um, go hang with right now, so I'm very selective on, on who I, I... I need to, to check out the streams before I take people to them, just because there was a weird thing with my account where this PC isn't verified, but my husband's PC did get verified, so if the chat is verified only, I can't talk in their chat on this computer, but I can on his. It's weird, um, so I have to, like, pre-check out the streams, so, um, I don't want to, like, raid a channel and then not be able to talk and seem like I'm being a total asshole in the chat when I can't talk on this PC in that channel so it, it, it's weird but yeah like we only have the one cell phone that we share between the two of us and he has it 90% of the time and that's fine I don't care um but it won't let us verify both of our twitch accounts because he does have one on the same cell phone number it has to be a different cell phone number and I'm like this is dumb but um, it, the way it's set up so mine's not fully verified to talk in the verified only chats but if my accounts logged into his PC then I can it's it's bizarre but um, it's like okay whatever so I, I've like a lot of the chats are um, so you have to two-factor through an authenticator app and it won't look <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Twitch. That's helpful. So, um, so yeah, I think we'll, we'll just end it here today, and I'm not gonna go and check out anybody new, because I haven't been in their, their chats yet. Yeah, so, I mean, it just, it makes it a little more difficult for, for me to, to come in and participate and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it might make it easier for them to find the trolls, maybe, but, um, you know... The trolls haven't been so bad lately, so they must have done something or else I'm just not their target, which is fine with me. Leave me be. Um, but um, I've got Mubot, like, on the hunt for, for some things. Like, you know, you try to post a link, no, you, you, you can't talk in all caps and, and that kind of thing. So um, I don't even know what else I have Mubot but, um, timing people out for. <laughs> I just clicked a bunch of stuff and haven't looked at it since. But, um, yeah, so we're just going to end there today. So I don't, you know, make myself look like an asshole for not talking in somebody's chat when I get there and find out, oh, it's verified chat only. So, um, yeah, 
Yeah, so. Next stream day is going to be... Next scheduled stream day is going to be Thursday. We're going to be playing uh, Coral Island. We'll be back in there checking out that. That's still in early access, but I'm still really enjoying it. We still have a ton of stuff to, to check out and do in there as we're playing through the seasons. We're still in summer. Friday will be the solo sandbox zoo that I'm working on where I spin the wheel for everything that we're doing. Just about where I spin the wheel and it tells us what we're doing. We're still working on that exhibit frog house. Um, but we're getting we're getting closer to being being done with that. One, maybe two more streams. I'm gonna try to finish that that build up on Friday. Don't know if that's gonna happen though, but we'll try. Um Saturday afternoon early, the husband will be streaming our challenge zoo build off that we're doing against each other. And then maybe around 1 p.m. Central, noon if he's up early enough, but maybe closer to 1 p.m. Central. Um, that is on the schedule now on the channel. Um, and then Sunday, next Sunday into Monday, we'll be back doing this. Um, I would do this more days a week if I could, but I just don't have the time. I need the other two days to get done all of the other stuff around the house that didn't get done the rest of the week. And Tuesday is the husband's D&D &D day with his group of people and they kind of are going at the time that I would normally be going and then Tuesday night he just kind of has guy time with his friend and Wednesday when the friend's available. So that's that's more than fine. He's more than patient with me doing my stuff the rest of the week. Um, we might try to squeeze in a bonus stream either tomorrow afternoon or Wednesday for me working on my part of our challenge zoo with the two of us together. We'll see though. I don't have it scheduled. Just have your notifications on. If we go, we go. We don't, we don't. Shit happens sometimes and I can't do the bonus content that I want to. So until we see each other again, it's been great. Thank you for hanging out with me, T. It's been lovely. Um, I can't wait. Post some, post your stuff in, um, in, in Nine's Discord if, if you, um, if you can in the show and tell channel or whatever channel. Let me know. Um, when you do, because I'd love to see it. Uh, this one I might try to get a screen cap for to put in the, the work in progress channel. Let me, let me drop a bob so I can get a better screenshot of it. Um, but, uh, it's gonna look really weird for people that don't know what's going on with this, but, you know, we know, and, and that's, that's all that really matters. So, yeah, so I will see you guys on Thursday, maybe? Um, you guys have a great week. Take care of yourselves, and I appreciate your time. Thanks for hanging out with me this afternoon, and uh, have a good one. Oh, it can't be that bad. <laughs> but you know what? We all have to have some fails before we can make it look right. But yeah, hopefully I can see, see it someday or see a version of it. But uh, yeah, thanks guys. Have a great one.